This is our second video in the series where I'm building the concept of numbers from scratch. In this video, we will talk about axioms. What are axioms? And how do we build intricate systems from them? In this video, I will discuss this. But before we delve into the subject, I want you to do a one important thing. I want you to forget everything you've learned at school about numbers. This sounds easy, but it is going to be a very tough thing to do. The concepts that you have learned about numbers will creep up time to time, but you will have to put a lid on them if you want to master this content and really understand it. The only thing that I want you to remember is the concept of equality. The concept of equality is when one thing is equal to the other and be denoted by this. If A is equal to B, then it is evident that B is also equal to A. And if we say that A is equal to B and B is equal to C, it is evident that A is equal to C. There is another concept that I want you to remember. That concept is a converse of equality, which is saying something to be not equal to. And, and we denote this concept by this symbol. We say that A is not equal to B when the statement A is equal to B is not true. So coming back to axioms, what are axioms? Axioms are self-evident facts like the concept of equality, for example. These are statements that are taken to be true. They are building blocks of a theory or of a system, a system like a system of numbers. Another example of an axiom is a statement that all men are mortals. We know this from experience, and hence it is a self-evident fact that all men are mortal. The number system is built on similar set of axioms, which are self-evident. An analogy to understand an axiom is like Lego blocks. We can build intricate structures from Lego blocks. Just like that, we can build intricate theories from axioms. Now coming to the axioms of numbers. If we really want to understand what numbers are, we will have to look at why do we use them. We use numbers to count and to measure things. This psychological property of counting is so innate to biological systems that an organism as simple as an ant counts. Ants count their footsteps to know how far they have traveled from their colonies. We will call these counting numbers natural numbers because they come naturally to us. Our first axiom is axiom red. We cannot call it first axiom because we have not yet defined what numbers are. So the axiom red states that 1 is a natural number. We don't yet know what 1 actually is and what it does, but it is a natural number. In mathematics today, it seems more logical to start from zero. But I will start from one. The reason is that the concept of one comes naturally to us. And it took us long time to grasp the concept of zero. So the concept of zero is abstract. However, it still is a matter of convention, a notational convention. And you can alter these axioms to start from zero if you want. Having said that, we will come to the other axiom, which is axiom yellow. The axiom yellow states that if we denote a natural number by the letter x, there exists a unique successor of that number, which is denoted by x prime. But what do I mean by a successor? This calls for another analogy. So far, our axiom system resembles Miss Universe beauty pageant. Sushmita Sen, a Miss Universe of 1994, was a successor to the Miss Universe of 1993, Dayanara Torres. Sushmita Sen was the unique and the only successor to Dayanara Torres because each year there is only one crowned Miss Universe and you can only compete once in Miss Universe pageant. Just like our natural numbers, there is only a unique successor to our natural numbers. Because this pageant was started in 1952, the first or the premier Miss Universe was Army Cell. Hence, Army Cell was not a successor of any Miss Universe. This brings us to our next axiom. Our next axiom, axiom blue, states that 1 is not a successor of any natural number. We can say that 1 is Army Cell of natural numbers. So far, with the help of these axioms, we have made a system that we can use. We can use this system to name our axioms. If 2 is a successor of 1 and 3 is a successor of 2, 4 is a successor of 3 and 5 is a successor of 4, then we can employ this increment to name our axioms. We can call axiom red to be 1, axiom yellow to be 2 and axiom blue to be 3 and so forth. We will denote these axioms by Roman numerals. 
This will save us a lot of hassle. Axiom 4 states the obvious. It says that if a successor of a natural number is equal to the successor of another natural number, then it means these two natural numbers were the same. If x prime is equal to y prime, then x is equal to y. This is fairly obvious. We will now move on to axiom 5. We will call it the axiom of induction. The discovery or invention of this axiom is considered to be one of the most important discoveries of our civilization. The importance of discovery or invention of this axiom is equated with the importance of invention of a wheel. We have used this axiom to learn many mysteries of reality. However, the self-evident truth of this axiom is not very clear. This will warrant some explanation. But before I explain this axiom, I want to state it. The axiom states that let there be a set M of natural numbers and the set has two properties. One is in the set. If x belongs to set M, then so does the successor of x belongs to it. If these two conditions are satisfied, we can say that all natural numbers are contained within the set M. To understand this concept, I want you to imagine a set. Imagine a set to be a bucket. This is an informal interpretation of a set. However, we will formally discuss sets when we will come to it. Now this bucket can contain an infinite amount of objects. Now imagine these objects to be connected with each other via a string. If the first object is in the bucket, and I say that whenever an x object is in the bucket, and so does the successor of that object is in the bucket, and if this property is satisfied, we can see that all objects will eventually end up in the set. A classical way of looking at this is through dominoes. Imagine the first domino falls, and when the x domino falls, and so does the successor of that domino falls, we can see that all dominoes will fall x here can be seen as any domino and the successor of x would be the successor of that domino. Now I want you to look at these axioms once again. The axiom 1 states that 1 is a natural number. The axiom 2 states that for every x there exists a unique successor which is denoted by x prime. Axiom 3 states that there is no natural number whose successor is 1. Axiom 4 states that if x prime is equal to y prime, this means that x is equal to y. And the axiom of induction states that let there be a set M of natural numbers with following properties that 1 is in the set. When x is in the set M, so is the successor of x. Then we can say that M contains all natural numbers. I want you to go through these axioms again. I want you to write them down on a piece of paper and place them somewhere in your room where you can see them every day. I want you to internalize them. In the next video, we will learn about proof and we will employ these axioms to prove some properties of natural numbers.